الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على شرف الأمياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته من التبع سنة أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب إشراه لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأهل الأمضة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله دو هفته كي وقفة كي بعد دوبارة after two weeks break we are starting again the Tafsir Quran program um, I was on the Umrah in Saudi Arabia and may Allah accept our dua and I made the Umrah with the intention of for the Ummah Rasulullah Sallallahu so all those who are participating with our program may Allah bless you and may Allah accept uh, Umrah and give you the ajar of this in the dunya and the akhirah for all of us and uh, make us the more observant and practicing Muslim in our heart and our soul and our body and our action and deed um, so, so last time we finished with the Surah Al-Baqarah which is the second chapter and now today we are going to start with Surah Al-Anfal which is the 88 number of chapter revealed in Quran and um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this was revealed in Medina and um, this chapter has um, is in the position of recitation is in um, ninth position um, and it is 88th in the sequence of revelation um, this chapter has a multiple level of release uh, revelation um, this is uh, revealed and it all it is about after the battle of Badr and some issues about the battle of Uhud are mentioned in here um, which is was obviously was the second year of migration of Prophet from Mecca to Medina um, there is Anfal. Anfal is the uh, what we call is the spoils of war, and Prophet ﷺ was up, allowed for the spoils of war, and Al Anfal is something the share of the Allah and His Messenger. So a scholar described that this uh, Anfal is the fifth, which is the twentieth percent. If you have a hundred percent, twenty percent is for Allah and His Messenger, and this is what is how it is divided. The if you take the whole booty. It is broken down into five portions or tw uh, five pieces. The one of the five pieces, which is 25th, uh, 20th percent of the, that, that 20th percent is further divided into five portions. And one portion goes for profit. One portion goes for his family. And the three portions goes for the poor and orphans and needy. So that is how it turns to be. It's almost like a 0.4 percent or the 4 percent of the total, which is coming to profit. After Prophet ﷺ passed away, it was ajma and agreed that all of it will go to the mal ghanimat, which is uh, going to be Darul Mal, which will be all for the state, and state will serve the Muslim community and the near uh, poor, poor and needy people. So uh, this is somehow the calculation of Al Anfal. Anfal is the fifth uh, portion, which is twentieth percent of the total of the booty. And that total 20% is further divided into five portion and of the one portion is for profit one portion for his family which is not anymore given to them which is again ulama did it and my personal opinion uh, they should be given to that money if there is any spoil which is not anymore now there's no war there's no spoil of war uh, let's I'll begin with the chapter bismillah rahman rahim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأنفال قل الأنفال لله والرسول فاتقوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله إن كنتم مؤمنين. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, they ask you about the spoils. Say, the spoils are for Allah and the Messenger. So, fear Allah and set your relations right and obey Allah and His Messenger. If you are believers, 
Certainly, the believers are those whose hearts are filled with awe when the name of Allah is mentioned, and when His verses are recited to them, it makes them more developed in faith, and in their Lord they place their trust. الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They are those who establish salah and give away from what we have given to them. The أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّا لَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ Those are the believers in reality. For them there are high ranks with their Lord, and forgiveness, and dignified provision. كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ it is like when your Lord made you leave your home for the sake of truth, while a group from the believers were averse to it. They were disputing with you about the truth after it became clear, as if they were being driven to death being seen by them. So, verse number 126, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they ask you about an unfair. They ask you about the spoil of the war. And there is a, some narration about what was the significance of revelation of uh, this verse of the Quran. Uh, it is narrated that uh, Saad ibn Abi Waqas narrates that his brother Omar got martyred. And uh, Saeed bin al As was also, who was a not believer, was killed. And uh, uh, Saad radiallahu anhu. <coughs> Saad ibn Abi Waqas took the sword of the uh, Saeed bin Alas and that was called Zul Kathifa. Uh, so when he brought it to Rasulullah, his prophet says, put it into the Umal al So uh, he kind of thought in his heart that my brother got killed and his sword is also being uh, taken and put into the Umal al uh, then when the Quranic verse revealed, Prophet told him to go and pick it up and keep it with you. Uh, then another uh, narration is that through Akrama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Badr, that day he said that whoever does fight bravely and valiantly will be giving such and such reward. And there were some elderly folks who were also holding the standards and they thought that they should be getting equal share. So uh, this is one of the things to, uh, to settle the dispute. That 100% of the spoil is not going to go to the believers. For 80% will go to the fighters and all those equally be divided among them. Uh, another uh, narration is Abad bin Samit says that in the Battle of Badr, when the enemies were defeated, um, there's a group of uh, prophets' companion who chased them and killed them. And when they came back, they thought that they would deserve more because they were more aggressively going after the enemy. And on those people who were left behind, they were saying that we will be uh, equally shared because if you had been defeated, you would have come to us in the protection with us. Uh, so there was some dispute, basically, not choke. This is the first battle of Islam. Muslims were 313. The disbelievers were 1,000. Uh, the story, uh, which has been uh, narrated in the Sira, is that there was a, um, there was a big, um, uh, what you call the caravan of the business trade. Abu Sufyan was leading, who was not a Muslim at that time, with few guards, was coming from Syria to Mecca. 
and he had the news that the Muslims were coming to attack him. So he sent the message to Mecca that they are, they are in the threat of being attacked and robbed. Uh, Prophet ﷺ, when he heard about that the mass caravan of Abu Sufyan is coming, so he prepared a group of 313 Muslims who had about eight swords and the rest of them did not have much and only few horses and most of them were on their foot. And this has been narrated in the, in the book of Sirah that uh, when Prophet went out of the Mecca of the Medina and he uh, stopped them and he asked them, because they also learned that the Abu Sufyan has changed the route and he went from a different close to the ocean side route which is distant from Medina and he uh, took away and he sent a message to Abu Jahal that uh, that we are safely out and don't bother about it but he had prepared a army of thousand men with the camels and horses and the swords and so on and so for a very powerful way they came in uh, they thought that they will take care of Muslims and uh, beat them up. Uh, accordingly, in further in narration, we will hear about it that Prophet Wasallam had a dream that he was shown the way each one of them will be placed when they fight. So when, when the news came to Muslim, uh, the group was hoping that they will be getting the caravan with the, with the wealth rather than an army of uh, fighters coming to beat uh, or kill them. So at that time, Prophet ﷺ stood up and he asked that the, they were more uh, Ansar, the local of Medina, and these are called the Ansar, the helpers, compared to the Muhajir, the immigrants who came from Mecca from, with the Prophet. So Prophet asked them that, uh, would you be willing to take an oath to fight with me and fight for us for the Islam? Because when we left Medina, your agreement was with the uh, Abu Sufyan situation and Allah wants you to confront with these people. And they were coming to destroy Muslims. So when, he, when their caravan got the news that Abu Sufyan and the trade caravan have safely left the area, um, they said, no, we are not going to back up. Now we are gonna go and take care of these Muslims. And when they were in, they saw a dream that they saw Muslims were very few in numbers. And the Muslims had a dream and Prophet had a dream and they saw that Muslim, the disbelievers were in a very few numbers. According to scholars, this was because most of them later become Muslim and those who uh, died, very few, 70 of them was killed in this battle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angels in thousands and thousands and they were seeing them, each of the party was seeing very few of each other. The disbelievers thought that we will capture these few men and we'll bring them to Mecca and show them that, look, they were the one who were trying to attack our caravan. And the Muslims were seeing as a dream, a prophet was shown and Muslim had seen when they came confronting them, they saw that very few of them were appearing to them. Uh, with this uh, <clears throat> situation, so with this situation, uh, Muslims were in a, a kind of a, a, a impression that the few disbelievers, the disbelievers are seeing as the Muslims are few, but as the as the battle started, there were more and more Muslims who were going appearing to them and. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angel and the re-identification of those who killed in the battle uh, by angels was that they were hit on the neck on the side and this is what is shown here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing Fattakullaha wa aslihu zata bainakum so be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and set up your relation straight and obey Allah and his messenger and this is uh, if you are really believers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the attributes of believer. Indeed, the moment is the one when the zikr or the, uh, the words of Allah and the name of Allah is invoked in front of them. Their heart are filled with uh, humbleness and humility and faith. And they are put their trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا When the Quranic verses are recited to them, their iman increase. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They put their full trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ones who establish the salah and then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, they spend from them, from this. So three things they are describing. That one is they, uh, when they hear the Allah's name and the Quran, they become more in stronger in their faith and their heart become full of the love and devotion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they establish the prayer and they spend from the path of, and the path of Allah from 
what Allah has given them. These four attributes are described for the mu'min. Then there says, Ulaika hum ul mu'minun haqqa, and they are the true believers, and lahum darajatun in the rabbihim. For them, there is a higher status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgiveness, and rizq and kareem, a kind sustenance. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing that we brought you out, kama akhrajaka rabbuka min baytika al-haq bil haq. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you out with the truth from your home, when the min al mu'minina la karihun, and believers, when the Prophet says that we have to put a fight or we have to take on the fight with the with the bigger contingent, 313 versus 1000, a group of believers was thinking that we see an obvious death. We have only eight swords and the rest of them are sticks. They are barefoot. They don't have many horses. So very few, very weak army versus uh, or a group of people versus a full flash thousand well-equipped soldier. So you jadiluna ka bil fil haq baad ma tabayyana ka inma yusaqoona ilal mauti wa hum yanzaroon. And they were disputing with about that truth. After that, it's become clear that they are being driven to death, being seen by them. So they were seeing a death in front of them, but they did not know. Allah wanted to bring each other of these group so that they could see that finally those kufar who thought that Muslims are weak and very few Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to show them this is not the case. They are under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. 